A couple of weeks ago, Stripe launched this new page and I hovered over the navigation out and I was like, whoa, how are they doing that? Because, you know, if you have a drop down and you sh hide one and show the other, you can't just transition the background. You can't just move the unordered list from one to another because it's two different elements. So I figured out how to, to do it and we're going to build a replica of this in a coming video. But what I wanted to do is start with something simple just so we can get the ideas because it's it's a bit of a doozy. They obviously have some really good developers at Stripe to build this thing. Um, but I really want to understand sort of the, the fundamentals of what's happening. So this is what we're going to start with. And then in a couple of videos down the road, we're going to replicate this sort of thing with the Stripe navigation. So uh, here's what we're doing. We've got these links on the page. And when you hover over one of the links, we've got this little pill that's going to both resize itself. So it's short and long, as well as follow you around the page wherever that is going. So let's open up our index-start and get going. Go down to our script tag here. So first thing that we need to do is to get all of what I like to call triggers, things that will be hovered that need a background behind it. So we, I'm just going to do every single link that's on the page. Let's say const triggers equals document.query selector all a every single link on the actual page. Then what we need to do is create what's called a highlight because uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, how does this actually work? If we inspect it here and we look at our DOM, you're going to see that we have the span with a class of highlight that I've just tacked into the DOM here. And when you highlight over something, it will figure out the width, the height, and where on the page that actual item is. And because there's CSS transitions on this element, it's just going to transition itself from place to place to place and and the width the height and the transform translate x and translate y values are going to be uh, moved on over so we will first make that highlight ourselves rather than having to go into our html and do it we're going to make it in there so we'll say const highlight equals document dot create element and we're going to make a span we're going to add a class of highlight and then we're going to put it into the DOM. When we open this up in our browser here, you actually won't see that highlight anywhere. And it's because it does not have a width or a height or anything like that. But if we inspect, you should see that we do actually have this highlight element in here. Good. Now what we need to do is listen for someone for someone enters into a link. So we'll make a function called let's call it highlight link. And we'll just console log highlight. And then we'll listen for the mouse enter event on each of our triggers. Triggers for each. I'm going to take our link and we're going to take the link and we're going to add the event listener for mouse enter. And when that happens, we are going to run the function highlight link. Good. Now let's try it out. Console highlight over. There we go. We've got highlight triggering on all of the links on the page. And you can tell that by console logging this and you'll see it will log the actual link that we're looking for. Good. So we've got that working so far. Um, but now what needs to happen is we need to figure out with well, the width, the height, the X and the Y. We need to figure out how big is the element that we hovered and how uh, and where on the page is that actual element. So we're going to use a method called get bounding client rect, which is uh, a bit of a mouthful to say, but we'll say const link chords. This is going to give us the coordinates and this. This is going to be equal to the thing that was triggered, which is going to be each of the links the dot get bounding client rect and then just console log those link chords to see what we have here. So I'm going to hover over this sucker. Ah, and look what we get here. We get the client rect. We've got the bottom, the height, the left, the right, the top, and the width. So it gives us all the information about where on the page does that thing actually live. Now that we have those coordinates here, we can simply take our highlight element and we can apply the style dot width is going to be equal to, and we'll take the link chords dot width and you need to put on px on the end otherwise it's just going to be 399 or 409 or something that we don't know and we'll do that also with the height 
let's see where we're at with that. So you hover one of these. Okay, so that matches up. And then when you go from one to another, it's dynamically applying the style to it. And if you go to our style.css and you look for the highlight selector, dot highlight, here we go. We have this transition on here of 0 0.2 seconds. So if I were to change that to two seconds, you'll see that it will just change itself over that amount of time. And like these, these links are a little bit shorter than these links. So it will grow both in width and height. So that is why if we didn't have that transition on there, it would just be immediate snaps. And that's not what we want. We want it to animate itself. So where the, the fun part comes in is where we start to animate the left and the right values. And we're going to be doing that rather than doing it with CSS dot left and dot right uh, or top and bottom. What we will be doing is we'll be using the transform property to apply it. And that can have some benefits when you're doing, you're looking for some really smooth animation. So we'll take our highlight, we'll apply the style of transform. And normally how it works is that we say something like translate, and then you give it an X and a Y. So 100 and 100. So you see how it animates itself to 100, 100, but we want to make these 100 and 100 dynamic. But we take our 100 and replace it with our variable here. So we'll say link chords dot left. And this one is going to be link chords dot top. And that will give us the value right from the top. Now, if we hover over any of these items here, everything is looking good. You can also go up into one of your ones and maybe put a break tag in or something to make it bigger. You can see that it's going to transition both the height, the width, and the X and the Y. Now, you might think you're done, and, and a lot of people do this, but they don't try, like open your dev tools and scroll down a little bit. Now hover over one of them. Oh, what the hell is going on? These, they're like a little bit messed up. If I just scroll down a little bit, you see how it's off by the amount that I've scrolled? down. Hmm, that's a little bit of a pain here. And how we compensate that for that is you can do it in a couple of ways. First, we could figure out uh, what the offset of the actual parent is. And we're going to do that in the next one. But in this case, I think we can just simply take how far the person has scrolled down and then take that away from our actual item. So what how do we do that? Well, let's go into our window here. Window dot scroll Y. It's going to give us zero. Scroll down a little bit and rerun that. It's going to give you 67. So that's how far we actually are. So let's go back and, and refactor this code a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make our own coordinates here. So we'll say const chords equals is going to have a width, which is going to be equal to the link chords dot width. Those the width and the height are fine, right? But the problem is with our X and our Y or our top and our left. So the top is now going to be our link chords dot top minus window dot scroll y and then we'll do that for our left which is link dot left and we can also do scroll x just in case you have any horizontal scroll there then what we'll do is we'll switch out the reference to link chords with just the chords object which we've done here we've done a little bit of math there so now when i refresh i'm scroll down a little bit it still doesn't work, and that's because I minus them. We should add them in, not take them away. There we go. Now, if I'm scroll down anywhere on the page, it's always going to follow us along, regardless of where we are on the page. So that is the very basics. Really, what I wanted to get down there is this concept of the get bounding client rect, and then uh, applying it to the inline style. In a couple more videos, we're going to go ahead and build out the entire dropdown uh, which is a lot more involved. I'll see you then.